Hey everyone, welcome back to the thing about wildlife in a nutshell, where you will hear a bite-sized story from our guest wildlifers' time in their field. Our lives among nature tend to be a string of funny, intimidating, or simply absurd anecdotes, and I'm going to be bringing these to you through some wonderfully diverse and fascinating voices. In today's episode, I spoke with Jobin Vargis, an ecologist with a master's in ecology from Pondicherry University. His initial training as an architect and later as a landscape architect now contributes in interesting ways to his work on animal behavior and movement. With an increasing interest in the natural sciences and growing experience within the field, Jobin entirely shifted gears towards ecology in 2015 and is now studying the bird communities of the wonderful Shola Sky Islands for his PhD at Aisar Tirupati. In our conversation, he reflected upon his journey from architect to bird ecologist and how exciting and daunting making the switch can be. Here he is now on the thing about landscape avifauna. Hey Jobin, how are you doing? Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you, Shika. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for calling me to this uh, podcast. Yeah, no, I'm very excited to talk to you. And uh, you've also been doing many different things. And I think you and I met for the first time now seven or eight years ago. And in this time uh, that I've known you, you know, we've spoken sporadically. And every time I've spoken to you, you've been doing something new, which is very exciting. So I think it'll be fun to chat yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I think we met at MCBD, right? Madras Crocodile Bank. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that, yeah. that feels like forever ago <laughs> at this point. Yeah, it was also, yeah, it was also, yeah, it was also a time where I was like uh, not exactly sure what I was doing. I was transitioning from one field to the other. And uh, that was my first stint, by the way, at the, uh, like into this field, ecology field. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought that up because that is go. That was going to be my first question to you because you your original training, like uh, training number one, we can call it, was to be a landscape architect. Theoretically, it it seems like a a field which is far removed from ecology, but it seems like over the years you found a lot of parallels and you found ways to kind of marry the two. Uh, but before we get to that, you know, what was that shift like and what what really called you or pulled you towards the field of ecology or doing something in wildlife uh, from being someone uh, in the field of landscape architecture? Yeah, I mean, so the thing is, um, while I was working as a landscape architect, I mean, I've already, I had already worked for like three years. And even during our um, studies, like masters, uh, while I was doing my masters, uh, we were taught ecology as a subject and uh, my friends, I mean, I was, I was already interested in birds at that time, but uh, I wasn't much into birding. Um, th- it was three years uh, in landscape architecture and I was slightly getting overwhelmed with the fact that I don't want to do this my entire life. Like, uh, this is not something that I was uh, hoping to do. And uh, I mean, and my the slow shift towards birding and more ecology stuff was uh, uh, very obvious because even um, while working, we have some biodiversity component that we keep uh, presenting to our clients. While even like even for say for example, if you're designing a plot or designing a project of some sort, like uh, IIT or something like that you do present, of course, I mean, it's like a mandatory to be presenting biodiversity aspect as well for that. So that was my uh, my uh, my speciality or whatever you call that. I mean, I was the one supposedly handling those, handling those parts. So I knew that this is what I wanted to do, like the ecology part, the biodiversity part, and the other stuff are like, okay, I mean, I can just handle, but I'm not very good at it. So I quit my job. One year, I I was supported by my uh, ex at that time, and uh, yeah, I mean, and my brother as well. So I had the privilege to transition from one field to the other. And uh, uh, MCBT happened to be the first stint. Then uh, 
Then there was Erosha, Bangalore in Banagata National Park. And luckily, after, no, after that, I, I did work with uh, Krishna Priya Tamma, uh, with uh, Andre in uh, Pake. And that was like uh, the first uh, stint that I had, which was like in North India, the forest that I've never been to, not even, I mean, not even visited once in my life. And yeah, from there, uh, after that, there was, uh, um, the, um, I mean, Supriya K from uh, University of Chicago, and she was uh, doing her PhD in uh, Northwest Bengal on uh, like a competition between birds and ants in those forests. So yeah, I I I kind of worked again with her the next year, but that those were the stints that I was doing, and that actually made me realize that I really want to work in this field. And uh, since I'd never had like a proper e academic background, so I thought the best would be to do a master's. Mm, yeah, I mean, Pondicherry University happened to be the first, I mean, the master's that I got through. And yeah, after that, I think uh, once that ended, I directly joined my PhD, which I'm currently uh, at in uh, Isotherapathy. I love how dedicated you were in, you know, like taking that big break and trying so many different things one after the other before your master's. It must have been quite a string of uh, interesting experiences. And, you know, if uh, I remember correctly, when we were at M volunteers at MCBT, uh, you know, everyone was kind of encouraged to pick up little projects of their own and try different things. And, uh, of course, most people were doing something with crocs or with turtles. And I remember you created this fabulous visual model of the flight patterns of different bird species across the campus. And um, I think that is just so beautiful and maybe like the first uh, glimpse into what it's like to have um, multiple interests when you're in this field. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, you're right. I mean, I, I, I was actually... So I, I mean, uh, although I was work, working at MCBT and I was, I was kind of um, in, I mean, uh, I mean, it was attractive, the whole uh, uh, looking at crocs behavior and stuff like that. But at the back of my mind, there was this, I mean, I want to work with birds and I didn't think that it would work, but I just uh, proposed to Nikhil about this work that I wanted to do. And he was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. And I was like, Cool. I mean, okay, this is something that I can easily or not easily, but this is something that I really, really can do and would be able to do. So yeah, that was it. And and it it actually kind of um integrated both my uh, experience in working with, I don't know, some some sort of visualization and presentation part as well as uh, uh, interest in birds. So I was like, yeah, I mean, I think I should go with it. <laughs> <laughs> No, that, that's very cool because uh, I think you already had a very interesting skill set from being a landscape architect, even though you claim to have not been very good at it. Uh, but clearly a lot of those skills have carried forward. And um, so what was it like to go back and study and do that master's and now, you know, go back to a classroom setting and be a student and uh, what was that experience? Oh, yeah. like? Oh, it was. Uh, oh, that was okay. So I, I mean, I was obviously the oldest person in the class. And there was one more guy. I think he he didn't stay for more than half a semester or something. But yeah, I mean, I was literally yeah, literally the oldest person in, in the classroom with the. But uh, but I was surprised how easy it was to get along with people, uh, for me uh, of I mean of that age and I didn't feel like out of place everyone was so welcoming so and it took like a month or two before I could actually get into my like uh, get out of my this uh, uncomfortable feeling that I was feeling because um, because I was older than everyone stuff like that so once I got into the groove like oh I mean I knew I knew I mean the studying part was uh, it just happened. I was like, I love studying. I mean, I, <laughs> I realized I was, I was good. I mean, kind of good at school. And uh, when I realized that I have to go back to study and uh, um, I don't know. Uh, and more importantly, there were brilliant uh, professors at that time at Pondicherry University. There was uh, uh, Dr. Priya Davida, there was Dr. Patasarthi. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, all, all, they were, I mean, I think they retired just after a year uh, we joined. So that was sad for the other people who followed us. But uh, I mean, they were brilliant and the things that they were teaching us and it was like the whole statistics part was like, whoa. I mean, that was something that I never studied. And I was like, <laughs> whoa, it just blew my mind. So, I mean, it, it sounds very, you know, simplistic I don't know if, because you I mean as a, as a person from BSc background you have had a little bit of training in statistics but I never had that mm-hmm. and uh, suddenly and I, I couldn't even grasp it at, for the like most part of my year I mean the entire semester but suddenly at the end I started grasping it and it just blew my mind so yeah I mean it was fun it was fun to be a student again and the whole uh, I mean I, I I did cut back on the whole uh, uh, having fun as a student part, like, you know, the whole night out and hanging out with friends. I did sort of cut that out a little bit because I was like, no, no, I have to get into this field somehow. I mean, I, I was being a party pooper at most of the places, but, <laughs> but no, no, I did. I did manage to um, manage to ha- have fun at some of the farewell parties and whatever. I mean, there are these so yeah, I mean it was it was fun. It was, and some of the some of my colleagues, uh, some of the classmates are my colleagues right now, and they happen to be my my good friends till now. I mean, I mean they're my yeah, good. That's lovely, and I think I'm sure you also brought a lot to your batch as somebody who's had those kind of experiences before, and you've been through some, you know, also you started a different career and then you switched and then you had already worked for a while with different people before you did this master's. And I'm sure that that brought a lot of perspective to your batch as well, because I remember those who uh, were new to the field and who had joined and were part of my master's batch as well. I definitely learned a lot from them. And I think it's, it's very cool to have those different perspectives coming in because this is a field where you can actually bring so much else, right? It doesn't all have to be with blinders on and only ecology. I think there's a lot of other stuff that feeds into it. I didn't think about what I, <laughs> but I knew, I mean, yeah, there were group activities and stuff like that. And I mean, I, I, I yeah, it was, it was fun um, working with, uh, again, working with like so many people. Um, we um, we had this uh, small club called Eco Club. Uh, I forgot Pondicherry University Eco Club. We needed some someone to design posters, design uh, pamphlets to be distributed, and that's where I, that's where I come in. I I I, I mean I design these posters, uh, uh, and we had um, posters and logos and stuff like that to sell that club to the university. So that was where I came in. And also we had like small projects like um, snakes of Pondicherry University. So I drew this caricatured um, sketches of uh, snakes of the Pondicherry. I mean, there was like 12 snakes or something. And that poster turned out to, I mean, I, I liked the poster, but it turned out to be quite a, quite a eye-catching poster. So yeah, I mean, th- those were the things that I brought in is what I think. Otherwise, we were all on the same level. I mean, they they came with their own uh, expertise. Some of them were had like, like um, quite a unique. Um, if you're talking about ecology, I mean, because it's Pondicherry University and the course was ecology and environmental science, uh, it was not all ecology as such. I mean, some people uh, we had to learn everything, but uh, some people were more interested in environmental science part, and we uh, we as a group were also more more interested in the ecology part. So some of my uh, friends over there, they had this. MCC background and they were already into so much of birding and they knew a lot about birds and stuff like that and I was like I mean that was something I mean I hadn't hung out with a proper proper birder before that so something something very cool that I learned over there. You know I'm very happy that you brought up uh, your artistic skills because that was uh, another thing I really wanted to talk to you about because you are great at visual representation, whether it is, um, you know, just design and the aesthetics of things or even actual sketching and drawing, like uh, you just do such a great job. Like I love seeing every October when you do a bird version of Inktober prompts and your Instagram is just so beautiful during that time. And for anyone listening, I'm going to link uh, your profile uh, in the show notes so that everyone can go check it out. Um, But how has that 
now that you're also doing your PhD and you've gone into, uh, you know, a lot of just hardcore research at this point in your career, how has art kind of found its way there? Has it uh, been more of a hobby? Is it something that you like to do on the side or is it something that you feel the need to include into your professional life and space? Yeah, I mean, that's something that's something I'm still struggling with. Uh, I have never given up on art as what I understood. And I, I mean, I, I did recently by this uh, notebook where you where you can sketch, um, where you can do digital art or something. So I know that I am invested in that part of, uh, of my uh, life and I'm not going to give up art, but I really, really like the research part as well. And uh, uh, so the thing is, even while presenting uh, right now, there, there has been a lot of um, like intermittent presentations that I keep like my, I don't know, during your PhD, you have a lot of presentations that you give, right? So I make sure that I, uh, my presentations are always this, um, and not devoid of uh, my um, this other aspect that I have. Uh, it's it, it also includes that part of my this thing life. So yeah, I mean that is very uh, very obvious in my presentations. And uh, not that they are the greatest or something, but I'm 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 pretty happy with the, and yeah because it's one project. So I keep keep adding a little bit, little bit, little bit, so that it comes out like a a whole thing at the end of my PhD presentation. So that is there. I mean, something of that sort I'll definitely do. And probably also, if I if you ask me, I worked like a very, uh, for a very small period of time at Current Conservation, like we worked at Dutchman Foundation, but Current Conservation as a magazine, I worked for that. And I realized that uh, illustrations and uh, basically scientific illustrations and um, Mm, yeah, something of that sort always, uh, mm, uh, I mean, I, I felt more comfortable in that zone, but that is devoid of research and something that, yeah, yeah, I don't know, I, I'm still, uh, still trying to figure out how best to uh, marry this or integrate these two aspects. So yeah, let me, let, yeah, I think I, I, it'll be, take some time, but I think I'll get there somewhere. Yeah, for sure. And I think, uh, like you were saying, current conservation is a very nice example uh, of a platform that's trying to marry the two. Because for those who aren't familiar with it, it's a magazine where researchers or others from the field who've, you know, had experiences have written about uh, either research or certain landscapes or species and, uh, and that are all they work in collaboration with a lot of artists who then illustrate for each of those articles. So rather than being a magazine that carries photographs from a place, it actually carries illustrations. And um, it's, a, it's a really wonderful and very beautiful platform. Uh, I, I love the creative intermixing of the two. Um, but you're right, it is, it is a difficult line to walk because it pictorial representation does tend to simplify research uh, to some extent and it you know there's some amount of interpretation involved there and certain creative liberties you have to take but it's definitely a very interesting avenue for communication so coming to your research tell us a little bit more about what you're doing now and uh, how birds how you've gone from being a recreational birder to now studying them full time so I mean, uh, I mean, I would I would like to thank my uh, supervisor, my PI, uh, Dr. Vivi Robin, for this. But uh, uh, we met when we were in Pondicherry University. I mean, he came for a talk over there, and somehow um, he was interested, or he was more particular about studying birds at a landscape level. And uh, yeah, I mean, I met a landscape architect who was in. <laughs> so or he was. I mean, I was already doing my master's at that time. So yeah, well. So it, 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 it was easier um, to work with him and uh, uh, get into that project. So we currently what I'm doing is um, Chola Sky Island. So this, these are like these uh, uh, landscape, uh, which, which is biphasic. So it has two faces, grassland and forest. And it has been planted with uh, invasive uh, trees uh, like acacia, pine and eucalyptus. Uh, for the past 100, uh, one, 
for, for the past century or something, there has been this timber management that has been going on and that has created like a very complex kind of a woodland. So what I'm doing is in these novel habitats, the forest bird, the forest, the birds of the Shola forest are also found. So they are like uh, happily thriving in these novel habitats, uh, the plantations. It doesn't have to do anything with the composition of the stands because obviously there's uh, forest composition, which is totally different from the composition of an acacia plantation. So it has something to do with the structure and uh, environmental factors. So that is what I'm looking at right now. Like what are these factors? What are these specific ecological settings that has uh, enabled this uh, colonization of forest birds into these novel habitats? So it's not just birds right now. I'm also looking at uh, yeah the other biodiversity, but yeah, major focus is on birds right now. Oh wow, that just sounds so beautiful. And I think I'm um, I'm actually going to close by asking you about landscapes. You know, considering you have that sort of a uh, lens through which you have approached this field you know you've now worked in different landscapes in the country uh, so like you currently are working in the Nilgiris and these gorgeous Shola forests and grasslands and you also like you said you've worked in some areas in North India like Pake so which of these landscapes is the closest to you and which is the one you would like to see yourself ending up uh, studying Oh, I mean, definitely <laughs> South Indian, uh, Western Ghats, definitely. I mean, the language barrier is not there. My, my, my folks are quite close by. And uh, I mean, a lot of these things, apart from the landscape, landscape. But uh, I would not uh, miss out on working uh, again in Pake, Assam, I mean, or Arunachal, or for that matter. I mean, yeah, I would, I would like to go back again to that landscape and restart my birding because I don't think I did a good job birding over there so I would like to do that again in that landscape so yeah but I mean definitely um, if if there is a landscape that I would like to continue with it would be Shola definitely yeah amazing and uh, I mean I, I I find myself agreeing with you as well because the Sholas is just a breathtaking landscape no matter how many times you see it must be such a joy to have that as your field site and get to go there regularly. Yeah, it has, it has had surprises. I mean, not as surprising as uh, Pake, definitely. But uh, yeah, I mean, we did get to see uh, while on foot. We did get to see tiger. We did get to see uh, uh, Nilgiri Martin, which is I don't know, and Nilgiri Thrash. So, yeah, it was, it was fun when while we were doing our. It is fun. It's still fun. I'm still doing my field work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. I hope you have an incredible time with the rest of your field work and all the best yeah, for you. all that is to come. Thanks so much for talking to me, Jobin. Thank you, Shikhar. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening.